recently as various organizations scrambled to get women leaders on board after the new companies act came into being however diversity has various aspects to it and one of them is generational diversity with the workforce is getting younger day by day this webinar explores the challenges involved in managing a millennial workforce and innovative ways to tackle the same this webinar will also talk about what is a diverse for a workforce business case for diversity and inclusive leadership demographic dividend or downfall millennials as a critical segment of india's inc's success while while focus on gen y or millennials specifically busting myths about perceptions of this generation attracting motivating and retaining gen y or millennials a little about our today's speaker Aadi Sham Sundar is the director of research at Catalyst. She is also a PhD and an industrial organizational psychologist. She earlier worked at Infosys and Kronos. For her, Are You in the List is a credible platform to spread her mission of evidence-based organizational practices. Saurabh Nigam is the vice president HR at Snapdeal. He is an engineer and holds a PhD diploma in personal management and industrial relations from Exelarai from Shetpur. He holds that an important function of the HR practitioner is to manage the expectations of the various stakeholders of the organization. He is a uh, our partner for today's webinar for helping us uh, helping us make this program possible are DDI India, Cornerstone on Demand, Jaipuria Institute of Management, Stern Advisory India, and Video Recruit. We have saved time for you to ask your questions at the end of the webinar. For those watching the live webinar, you can submit questions at any time during the presentation through the question and answer section. We will try to respond to as many questions as time allows. We have a full exciting web agenda for the webinar today. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand over the webinar microphone to Aarti and Saurabh. Over to you both. Thank you so much, Purva. Uh, I'm really delighted to be a part of this. This is a topic that's very close to my heart. So very happy to be here. So before we start talking about how to leverage a diverse workforce, I really want to talk about what it really is. So when we talk about diversity it's pretty common to think of things like gender in india religion and elements connected to it basically any way in which people differ from each other but one of the critical points to really recognize is that when we talk about diversity we're not just talking about these visible dimensions we're also concerned with the more invisible or less visible dimensions that have impact on our work. So for instance things like uh personality, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Are you a fast learner or a fast reader or do you need more time to maybe process information? Things like your family background, your socioeconomic status, your personal style, all these are elements of diversity that may or may not be immediately what we think about. but it definitely comes to bear on your work even if it's not in an obvious or conscious manner some things like this are what we have assumed we should leave at the door when we come to work but what i'm proposing and what we found from our research is that it's important to keep in mind that these elements of difference actually make have impact on work and can and should be leveraged by organizations to expand the viewpoints uh in your work team in terms of how decisions are made and what these diversity dimensions really bring to the table when we are talking about creativity team decisions team dynamics etc on the job so in terms of then how this makes a difference and why it's really important like we say to bring your whole diverse self to work let me present to you uh the business case for diversity and for that i'm going to use gender as an example because that is what i do on a day to day basis in terms of 
helping organizations leverage their gender diverse workforce. So oftentimes when companies think about diversity and inclusion, they are presented with the symptoms. So for instance, this presenting problem that you see on the slide is that as women, as you go up the career ladder, you see fewer and fewer women at the top. And this presenting problem is the same for other dimensions of diversity as well. So any element that's not so-called the dominant uh, component of the workforce is we see the same sort of pattern where the higher up you go, the fewer representation or representatives of those members of that group you see. So when organizations reach out to us at Catalyst, we talk about moving beyond this presenting problem of representation to really how do you manage a diverse workforce using inclusive leadership. So for those who don't know about Catalyst, actually a quick word about that. Um, where I work is the world leading research and advocacy organization when it comes to helping organizations become more inclusive with a special focus on advancing women in the workplace. We have offices in Canada, Europe, US, India, Japan, uh, and Australia, and over 800 member organizations. So chances are your company is already a Catalyst member. So like I said, when we are talking to our members about diversity, we talk about four elements of the business case. So let me go to, you know, from the broad to specific in terms of the business case for gender diversity. The very first element or pillar of the business case is financial performance. So study after study has shown that having more women, having more diversity at the top and in teams throughout the workforce leads to better financial performance. Another related element of the uh, business case is leveraging talent. So better diversity climate relates to lower intentions to leave, higher employee engagement, greater organizational commitment. Another reason to really care about diversity is reflecting the marketplace and building reputation. And this is pretty critical for our topic today given that most of India's population are our consumers and they are in the working, uh, in a much younger working age group than the rest of the world, it becomes pretty critical that your workforce reflects your marketplace. So this is one sure way to enhance your reputation as an employer of choice. And finally, how it all comes together is in the mechanism with which diversity has its effects. And that is in impacting innovation and group dynamics. So like I mentioned earlier, the very uh, nature of discussions change, the kinds of diverse backgrounds that people bring together uh, is what actually makes the business case for diversity salient. And one of our advisory board members puts it really well when he talks about the different reasons to do it. He says it's not just the nice thing to do, it also happens to be the right thing to do for business. So that's a little bit about diversity in general and the business case for it. Let me now talk about uh, the millennials and the, the business case for generational diversity. And Saurabh is going to go into a lot more detail than I am, but I just wanted to introduce it. So for us, when we talk about India and generational diversity, it's clear to many of you that over half of our population is under the age of 25, 66% is actually under the age of 35, and only 6% is over 65. And this is directly contrast to countries like Japan or even other Western countries where they have the opposite problem. So for us, this could be a wonderful demographic dividend to really leverage at the organizational level. And the working age 
population of our country is really going to keep growing over the next 20 years. So it's right to start thinking about this immediately. But what we refer to as a demographic dividend also has the potential to backfire because unless our population is healthy, educated, and most importantly, working in a work culture that is inclusive and is able to leverage their talent, some of this demographic dividend might actually turn out to be a demographic downfall. So before we I hand it over to Saurabh, I wanted to touch upon what I meant by inclusive workforces and why diversity and inclusion go hand in hand, and especially how this relates to millennials and young talent. So we found in Catalyst research that inclusion really means the sense of belonging and a sense of uniqueness at the same time. So in other words, employees feel included when they simultaneously perceive that they are similar to, yet feel special and distinct from their co coworkers. And when employees are recognized for their differences, but yet feel like they belong and that they are valued, organizations are able to increase their benefits of the uh, workforce diversity that I've been talking about all along. So on the flip side, being excluded or being feeling like an outsider, which might come from fo focusing purely on diversity without focusing on inclusion, again, backfires. So this can impact employee aspirations, opportunities, and their career advancement. So the cost of exclusion is pretty severe, and that's why companies should be focusing on inclusion uh, and not just diversity. Finally, I'm going to leave you with uh, an opportunity. At Catalyst, we have started building a community specifically to engage millennial employees. And the purpose of this community is twofold. We're planning to do research to inform better best practices for our companies but it's also meant to engage millennials themselves with each other and with experts in order to sort of leverage opportunities within their organizations for career growth and advancement. So we're planning to kick off in a few short weeks. And if you want to get involved, I encourage you to email us at this email provided here, kiran at catalyst.org. So it's a great way for us to bring to bear all we've learned about diversity and inclusion from the gender space into this very critical important element for India, which is the millennial and gen generational diversity. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Saurabh, who will take you through much more detail around the millennial workforce and how and why to engage them. Thank you so much for this opportunity, People Matters, and I look forward to the questions at the end. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. This is Charles Nizam here, and uh, thanks a lot, uh, RP, for in terms of what diversity is all about and why it is important for all of us to, to focus on that. Um, I'm going to take it up from, from RP and build on uh, you know, the context you set on uh, around the millennials and uh, you know what are what are the parent management strategies which we can possibly employ to to you know start with gen Yers or the, or the millennials as we call them. But before I do that, I think why is it, why are we even talking about Gen Y and why is it important for us to to look at the parent management strategies uh, around the millennials? And for the key points I listed down here, right? Uh, Maybe 50% of the current global workforce uh, is, is, is made up of millennials or Gen Y as we call them. Uh, one of the research studies which has been done in India affects uh, almost 62% of the high potential employees are made up of millennials. Uh, the rate that if you're going, the majority of the workforce by 2025 will be made up of uh, this, this, uh, this generation. And which basically means that you know, the, this is the next future of the businesses across the globe. Uh, more importantly, 
is this is quote from from a gentleman called Dan Schrader who is the founder of Millennial Branding. There's a lot of work around Dan Schrader strategies for Gen Y, and he says that only seven percent of the Gen Y works for a Fortune 500 company, right? Uh, because uh, the startups are dominating the workforce of this demographic in today's economy, and that is a telling statement because what we are saying is that to the majority of the workforce, uh, or the workforce that's going to the majority of workforce in the next 10 to 15 years, uh, is not even choosing to work with a large organization, large fucking founder organization, right? And uh, therefore, if, if you and I are part of these, or, or you're managing the HR function or HR practitioners in these organizations, it, it's a sense and case for all of us to figure out that why is this, right? Uh, because we clearly cannot afford to miss out on uh, the majority of the workforce which is choosing right now not to work for a large organization, right? So with that context, I'm going to get into what are some of the perceptions about Gen Y. And uh, when we keep hearing about this, uh, the fact that, you know, the, 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 the young generation of the is highly spoiled, they're lazy in nature, they've got a really poor work ethic, they do not have any respect for authority, have unrealistic expectations, and they lack in social skills. Uh, I, for one, believe that you know, these, uh, these, these, these points are just perceptions and mere myths. And the reason for that, and I'm going to spend like a minute on that, uh, possibly the Gen Y or the millennials, as we call them, is the most technologically aware uh, generation which, which we have seen ever, right? Uh, which basically also means that they are possibly the generation which knows how to leverage or use technology to their own advantage, to their own benefit, when it comes to even a person in other world space. Right. Uh, so possibly a work which has which has been done in the two or three days time, they will be able to turn that around in a matter of few hours by you know going onto the uh, on 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 the internet into the internet and searching for solutions and then putting it up front. Right. Uh, somehow this generation has also been built or raised on on a mindset of entitlement. Right. I mean the way the the, the current generation has been brought up is that they were made to be special. They were made to believe that they are special and which has also meant that you know, they have very high expectations in terms of uh, what they're doing and from, you know, what they need from the organization, from their bosses, and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, so if you put these two three things together, which is the way they've been created, so the, 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 the mentality of the society and nature, and the fact that they're highly technologically involved than the many other generation, uh, will mean that you know, we possibly are mistaking their the ability to leverage uh, technology to their advantage for being gay, right? Or uh, if I pick up, for example, a uh, lacking in social skills, possibly the social skills of these, uh, uh, I mean, the traditional social skills of reducing out people in, in person, uh, this generation has moved away from there and they are put up in the social skills on the net, right? Uh, so for me personally, I do believe that these are clear myths because this generation has a lot to offer in terms of the awareness, in terms of the, the the ability to leverage technology and the fact that you know they, they believe that uh, they, they need to be add value to the organization. Uh, with that, let me uh, also talk about is this generation very different, right? And what I've done over here in this slide are essentially slotted four different generations uh, across four or five parameters, right? Uh, work ethic, communication, feedback and rewards, methods that motivate the generation. And if you really look at this, uh, there are distinct uh, differences between four different generations over here, starting from reference to baby boomer, boomers, to generation X, and Gen Y, what we're talking about right now. Uh, I'm going to just use one uh, example over here. So, so, for example, the communication, right? Uh, if you really look at uh, the generation of, say, reference or even baby boomers, uh, they would rely more on formal memo or in person communication, visually as uh, Gen Y, which is more focus on emails and internet and chats and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, one more piece of other difficult uh, around feedback and rewards. Uh, for a million, it's, uh, the reward has to be instantaneous and there needs to be for us on meaningful work. Right? Uh, there are daily rewards who would expect a monetary reward. Right? So there are distinct flavors which, which this generation brings to the table in terms of what their expectations are uh, across a multitude of those factors. Which basically drives home the point that you know we need to fundamentally relook at our talent management strategies to in order to attract, motivate, and retain this generation. Right. So that basically gets me to the next slide that okay, if, if there is a fundamental difference between the Gen Yers and the millennials compared to the other generation, what exactly do they want? And what I'm suggesting over here is, is 
through the HPR study, wherein they have plotted the needs of a gen wire across three parameters. What do they want from their bosses, from their companies, and the need to learn, right? Uh, and if you really look at this, right, uh, what are the millennials want from their boss? So they're actually looking at somebody whom they can look up to, who can mentor and coach them, who can help them navigate their career paths, because this is a very, very different generation when it comes to, you know, what they, or how they want to navigate their career path. Uh, what are they looking for their company? They're looking at a company which has got strong values, a company which can help them develop their skills, can give them customizable reward package because they're not, your uh, you know, some of them like some of the older divisions where they're look only looking for a monetary reward and so on and so forth. And they have this, uh, they have this unending desire and need to learn, you know, learn technical skills, leadership, and innovation, strategy, and so on and so forth. All right. Some of the other pieces that they also look for are uh, here, listed down, they, they, they are of, as I said, they are a highly technologically advanced uh, generation. Therefore, they, need, they have that need to have social media enabled in workplaces. They also look at flexibility and mobility in their, in their workplaces, and that's all sort of the needs which this generation has. Now, if this is what, what this generation is looking for, what we can do as a care practitioner to build that kind of manual strategy, so I've broken it down into two parts. One first part is around how do we attract this generation, right? And some of the ideas are, are here. <clears throat> so first one is around, you know, how do you create a nursery corporate culture? Because this generation has this burning desire to 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 learn, to get coached, to get mentored uh, by by somebody whom they can look up to, right? So as a as a practitioner, I think it's very important for us to understand that how we're creating that corporate culture which can nurture this talent or nurture this generation. I think that's extremely important. Uh, this, this generation, by its mature nature, uh, gets gets bored or by by monotony in work. So job flexibility is extremely critical. Uh, they look for challenging work opportunities. Uh, recognition program, as I already talked about, they have to be very very custom made for this generation. Uh, they need to have advancement opportunities. They should be able to see them, right? and it should be very visible to them. And entrepreneurship programs is around an ability or or, or an opportunity to lead. Uh, teams or lead initiatives within the organization so that's the thing which they look for like, when they're looking through make a career in any of the uh, organizations. Uh, that's around how to attract, how do we motivate and retain this generation? I think this, this slide is, is an interesting uh, uh, study done by McKinsey where they talked about how non-financial motivators, uh, which is around praise from immediate managers, leadership attention, chance to lead projects, uh, when they were plotted around, you know, when we plotted financial incentives and non-financial incentives, and we asked for effectiveness of financial incentives versus non-financial incentives, we see that most of the managers talk about non-financial incentives being more effective. However, if you ask, when the same correspondence were asked around the frequency of usage of non-financial uh, versus financial incentives, we saw a uh, reverse of that, wherein, you know, financial incentives were more in use compared to non-financial incentives. So there's a clear dichotomy wherein we're saying that non-financial incentives are more effective, but then we're not using them as much as we possibly are using the financial incentives. So the message out here is that how do we have a healthy mix of financial as well as non-financial incentives because that's what resonates with this generation. Uh, other than that, so the other thoughts around how do you motivate and retain this generation is around this. So uh, it's fun and flexibility at work path, uh, at, at workplaces, you know, give us an explicit career path, Freedom to innovate, training opportunities because this generation has the innate desire to learn. Uh, collaborative workplace because this generation needs to work in teams and uh, you know that's how they've been built up. Uh, keeping them engaged uh, is extremely critical because uh, you know they they, they they tend to do multiple things and keeping them engaged is extremely critical. And showing them a clear roadmap to success is very important because this is a generation which tries to success, right? And if they don't understand that what will take them from point A to point B. I think they, they will clearly get disengaged very, very quickly. So to sum it up all, I all can say is, you know, the, the millennials already account for almost half the workforce today, uh, and they need definition, learning, and growth. That, that's a very clear statement which, which you know, they, they make. Uh, and because it's important for us as our practitioners to relook and revisit our change management strategies, the talent management strategy, because the one thing is clear that millennials are here to stay, because this generation by the 50% uh, workforce, it's going to grow and become a majority workforce very, very soon, right? So they are here to stay. The onus is on us, as our practitioners, in terms of how are we revisiting and relooking our talent manual strategies in order to attract, motivate, and retain this generation.
uh, with that, I'm going to conclude uh, my presentation and uh, look forward to you know answering some of the questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Yeah, am I audible, Saravati? Yes, I can. So. Yeah, I think there was some technical error. I'm sorry. Uh, so as I was saying, um, thank you for those insightful thoughts, and I'm sure the young HR leaders would be very uh, excited to hear what you just said. Uh, we have a question from one of our listeners, and he wants to know that as as we know that le uh, leveraging the diversity is a key factor for better business performance. Uh, that is making an impact on our business uh, business performance. How can we use this in a more effective way? Sorry, I see. Yeah, Purva, can you repeat the beginning? I didn't hear the beginning of it. Hmm. Yeah, I was saying uh, we have a question that says that we know that leveraging the diversity is a key factor for business performance. So mm -hmm. how can we use this in a more effective way? Sure, I, I can start and sort of maybe you want to add to it. Uh, so the sure. question is really about, you know, everything that Saurabh and I were describing. In fact, when I was listening to Saurabh with his tips on how to attract, develop, and retain Gen Y, I was thinking, translating that in my mind to what I was saying about inclusive leadership. So, you know, the question is, how do we leverage that diversity? I would, one route is to, uh, to sort of customize your approach to make sure that your employees, whatever element of diversity they're bringing to the table, whether it's generational difference or gender or uh, any other nationality increasingly in our country, we're attracting a lot of expats. So the key is to understand that there is an element of difference there, but to include them despite that difference. So this idea, the, the formula for inclusion, which I described in terms of uniqueness plus belonging, is critical to really tapping into the trends that these diverse perspectives can bring to the table. And we've seen that doing that impacts outcomes that are critical to organizational uh, success, such as innovation and team citizenship. So I would say one mechanism is to pay attention to your leadership behaviors, your management, sort of training them on inclusion and uh, customizing their approach. Saurabh, you want to add? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, the only thing I can add uh, to what Arthur has already spoken about is that, you know, one, uh, obviously you need to recognize the fact that there is diversity in, in the workforce and, you know, you need to ensure that uh, your, your systems and processes are set up in such a way that you're not excluding, you know, any, any of the uh, set of the population that you have working with you in the organization. But I'm starting from right from entry, which is your, the way you're hiring, you know, uh, you may be missing out on, on a set of or a section of workforce uh, by the way you're hiring your people. Uh, and then there's some time to uh, bring the organization, I think it's important for you to uh, have those sections and communication around why it's important to have one the diverse workforce, which are very clearly spoken about. And then there's some time to bring the organization and the diverse workforce, which are very clearly spoken about. And then there's some time to bring the organization and the diverse workforce, which are very clearly spoken about. And I think uh, recognizing that the way you're structuring your work, you're structuring your processes. Uh, to ensure that everybody is included in, in, in your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work as the organization. I think that, that's very, very uh, important. The third aspect would be, you know, uh, uh, at a much higher level, and I'm sure Arthur would be able to help us out uh, to a patient form, is that, you know, how do you leverage different, uh, you know, different uh, people in different, uh, different ways, right? I think leveraging the strength of people is extremely critical, and therefore, uh, getting into deep into that uh, type of is extremely important as well. Right. Uh, so we have another question from Kanisha. She says that how do you think we can use social uh, media to attract and engage with the millennials? Okay. Uh, I think I can possibly go there. Uh, I think it's a very straightforward question in terms of you know, there is a plethora of social media which is available uh, uh, now, right? Uh, starting from LinkedIn to Facebook to, 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 to Twitter. And I just want to talk about what kind of things we are doing at Starfield uh, to, to, in order to attract talent on social media. Uh, so one of the things we've done is, uh, you know, the entire leadership team, including the, the CEO, the CEO, everybody has a Twitter handle which they use to post 
some of our key job postings, right? And because you know, these are people who've done well for themselves, highly followed on Twitter. Uh, so whenever we have a very uh, senior or maybe uh, manager kind of a role, uh, we 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 request and we ask our leaders to post that on their Twitter Twitter handles because when it gets broadcasted to a very very large set of population and uh, influential population, I would say. Uh, and in fact, to be honest with you, in last uh, seven months, uh, almost 80, 90 percent of our modern CNRs and hiring has happened through this tool. And that's an example which I can possibly quote. The other ones are more straightforward. You know, you need to have a presence on uh, social media around. So, for example, you need to have your company page on LinkedIn. You need to have your social page on Facebook. Which, and when I say again, you need to have. You should also be very clear about what kind of message you are putting it across. So some of the things that I talked about that you know you, you need to talk about the culture of the organization. You need to um, be able to showcase the the, the people and how they transfer uh, the, the on the career path. Uh, things which will help an outsider know more about your organization. And as much as you can talk about that on social media, uh, you'll be able to attract uh, uh, you know people from this generation. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Saurabh. So uh, we have a lot more uh, questions, but due to the uh, lack of time, uh, this is the last question that we'll be taking. Uh, so Madhujit Singh uh, says that do millennials really want a clear career path uh, from their organizations? Uh, so in his experience, they would prefer to look at various opportunities as and when it arises. <coughs> So I can take that. Uh, and what I can talk about is uh, yes, uh, you know I did talk about job flexibility and job rotation as one of the key attributes which which a uh, person from a Gen Y generation would look at. But I think it's also very important for the generation to have a clear visibility around what would it take for them to go in an organization, right? Uh, and I think that's where the career path question around career path comes in is that I'm I'm at point A. What would it take for me to go to point B? Now that point B could be within my function, could be a cross cross function. Uh, but I think it is very important for us to be able to lay that, that down very very clearly and transparently to this uh, generation because uh, they don't they don't want uh, they don't like being being kept in the dark around around their own career. This is what my point was. So I'd like to add to that, Madhuji. Uh, it's, it's a very important observation, and we've seen that also that. Uh, the younger generation definitely likes to job hop a lot more. They're constantly looking for the next best opportunity. But as an organization, as an employer, it's our duty to sort of offer those opportunities within. So even if they leave, they want to come back at some point, realizing that, in fact, their career growth and advancement that sort of talked about really lies at your organization and not elsewhere. So. Yeah, I think the the opportunity needs to be clearly defined. There needs to be an openness to discussing career paths with millennials. And also the recognition that there's no longer the traditional career path of just moving linearly up the hierarchy. So today's workforce, whether it's millennials or women or any other kind of uh, diverse workforce, is looking for flexibility so that even if you choose a non-traditional career path, you're still devoted, you're organizationally committed to that one company that allows you to sort of grow and thrive, and that's where your loyalty ends up uh, lying. So that was the only thing I wanted to add. Right, thank you so much, Aarti and Saurabh. We have a lot many questions coming our way. But I would request everyone to send uh, send your questions to us online, and I'm sure RC and Sarah would be happy to take them offline. Uh, so with Absolutely. this question and answer session, we are going to wrap up today's webinar. Once again, we thank today's webinar partner, DVI India, Cornerstone on Demand, Jaipur Institute of Management, Stern Advisory India, and Video Recruit. Finally, a special thanks to Aarti and Saurabh, the speakers for this webinar, for their time and invaluable information that they have shared with us today. And I would like to thank everybody in the webinar audience for participating in today's presentation. We will come back to you with many more. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's web webcast. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Pura, for organizing. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.